Hey everyone, it's Amadur, and today we are going to um, finally figure out how to display these little minis, and today we're going to paint this little bench. Now, these little minis, you guys know I'm obsessed with little things also, but I collect a lot of vintage things such, such as jadeite and whatnot. These little minis are made by the talented artist um, on Etsy, and the name is Desert Rhapsody. Of course, I will leave the link in the description so you guys can go check it out. I collect vintage jadeites, and she makes miniature replicas, and they're absolutely gorgeous. Now, she doesn't just do jadeite. She does a lot of Pyrex, and it's very, very gorgeous, like super, super detailed. So um, this, let me just show you what I got, what I have so far. This is a little uh, sea handle mug from... Um, from her and it's like perfect it's it's just super awesome just really really perfect like it seriously like so there's that i'm I'm, I'm going to show them to you as i take them off the little hutch which because we're today we're going to paint this it's a little bench and i'll show you tell you about that in a minute um this is the jane ray and look it even has the little grooves that jane ray cups and saucers have so there's that one this is my favorite shape mug, and this is the D-handle mug. So let me see, get closer to this. All right, so this is the D-handle mug, and it's super detailed. It has a little notch in everything. It's, it's just, here, let me show you. I should have prepared. Let me, sorry for the noise of my chair. Let me grab an actual, who would have thought I would be prepared one day? Not me. All right. So this is the original and this is the vintage one. Like down to the little notch right here, it is absolutely perfect. So that is the D-handle mug. Now these are fridges or refrigerator stackers or um, they were originally meant that you can put them in the stove, cook or whatever, and then you can do lev or leftovers um, and put them straight in the fridge. These are styled um, in the style of Pyrex and they come with the large one, like a casserole almost, this wide one, and then two smaller ones. So even the lids and everything come off of them. So this is this pattern, and I am so embarrassed I forgot the name of the patterns. Each pattern has like an actual name. So there's that one, and there's this blue one right here. So those are super gorgeous. She, sell the, she sells these in a set or just the individual ones. And this is, oop, making a mess. This is the Jadeite themed ones. Let me just put these over here. And I have like the actual ones that look like these. So yeah. So this is what we're doing today. We're going to go ahead and paint it with some chalk paint. I know, not a big project, but it's something that I've been trying to find. I've had these for months now and I've had nowhere to display them. I've been looking for like a Barbie hutch or something like that because these are one six scale, which is a Barbie size. Um, dollhouse scale is 112, so they're much smaller. This is actually from, and I'll insert a picture here somewhere. This little bench is actually a garden bench, and it was from Shalabi Hobbies, um, in their, like, gnome section, in their little fairy garden gnome section. I just thought it was really well, kind of, you know, it's, I, I think it's resin, um, and I just thought it was really well done. It's nice and heavy, so I'm not worried about them falling over and whatnot. I was looking for a hutch and whatever. This is actually, like I said, a garden garden bench, but they fit perfectly. I've bought like three different little um, miniature dollhouse furniture <laughs> to do this, to um, put these in, and it has not worked out. Anyhow, just shaking again this can. I am going to be using my Annie Sloan chalk paint. This is You don't have to necessarily use the Annie Sloan chalk paint. I just absolutely love it, as you guys know. Um, a chip brush, and this is just a regular bristle brush. I think these are, you can find them at the dollar store, you can find them at the, the at the, um, at the paint stores or the home improvement stores. Shoot, they have them at Walmart, for goodness sakes. They have them everywhere. I like using them, and they're super cheap. Like I said, I think these actually might even come from the dollar store. I haven't used my paint in so ever. Um, so you're able to use them. I've shaken this can up. I haven't used it in forever because I haven't been painting or crafting or redoing furniture and stuff in a long while. But I've shaken the heck out of it. 
So this is, um, what, what, so a flavor. This is old white. So I'm going to show you how I like to dry brush. Now we're going to do a super, super easy. You can do this. Uh, I actually do this technique on my actual furniture that I repaint. Um, if I call it my lazy distressing technique and I want to keep, I didn't like this color exactly, but I wanted to keep it as the dark undertone. So <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. This is that. This is probably like the dumbest tutorial that you guys are going to be like, what the heck? So I take this and then I just squish the brush in here. Hence why I like to use a bristle brush. So what you're doing is you're separating the, um, and by the way, start at the bottom or on the back in case you mess it up. You're separating the brush so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't brush on like a full thing and you're, I'm dry brushing it also. So it's, you don't have a lot of paint on here and you can go, I go very light at first and you can go as much as you can or as much as you want. And you want to keep in mind what's going to have less distressing. So you see that? And now your brush is almost dry. I'm doing section by section so I can go along with the wood grain to make it seem like each one of these pieces are are um are individual pieces, like realistic pieces, because these actually do have like you can see the the um, texture and everything, like the wood grain and stuff. So they actually have it. And I'm going to get dip it just a little bit again. Literally, you're just crushing your brush and like messing it up. But the more, see, the more the bristles are separated, the better. That's how I like it. So now we're going to go in this direction. And see, if you go in the direction of the wood grain, you get more, um, it actually pops up. It actually stands out more. And you can go as heavy or as hard, uh, as light as you want. I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit darker. Oh, let me not darker, a little bit more. So now you see here I didn't do as much and here I did. I'm going to crush it. And after a while you have a little bit of paint on your paper plate. And you can just go off of that. I'm going to go a little bit heavier on the parts I've already done. Because I liked, I wanted to match this section right here. So the only problem is when you do crush, crush your brush you might have little pieces of bristles um, lying around. But look, it's already starting to look like a whitewashed piece. And like I said, start in the back because I have done this several times where I'm like, yeah, let's go gung ho and I can do this. And I end up messing it up. Now, we're, like I said, I'm trying to go section by section and flip your brush section by section to, um, to get that wood grain. And if you go too light, too dark, no problem. This is chalk paint, so it's mineral based. And you can actually get a wet cloth and wipe it off as well while it's before you wax it and treat it. I'm not going to wax and treat this piece. I mean, it's just a display. But not only that, I wanted to get that drier aged look like it was a bench in grandma or nana's or mima's or poopos or whatever. Uh, barn and we're using now to display our jadeite. Now, you can also come and bring this stuff over here and you can see this will now, your display pieces will now show off more. All right. Okay. Um, so now we can go get some more paint and look, like I am not barely touching this and then I'm still going to come in here, crush it up. What I want to accomplish with this is separating the bristles. When you separate the bristles, you get a little bit more of that dry brushing technique. I'm trying to go off of piece by piece, wood by, uh, I mean, wood, um, wood piece or plank or whatever. I have, obviously I'm not a woodworker. <laughs> I'm not that skilled. Um, and just go up and down, back and forth, um, but always try to go along with the wood grain. Now, where the inside of this, I'm going to add a little bit more paint, and I'm going to paint it a little bit heavier. Because keep in mind, the insides of, um, of furniture will not be as distressed 
as the outside of the furniture. Now the inside, the background, yes, a little bit, but because it's wear and tear from usage. So under the, the shelves, I won't distress as much. Not only that, this because it was such a dark piece when I would display the my little pieces in it, it gave it a dark shadow, but that's because it's under the shade. So and you can always go back and take some away. Now this part I will not add as much. Like I said, you can go off of what's already on your plate. Do, 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 do. If you brush too too much, you'll get you won't get those brush strokes. It'll just fill it in pretty pretty quickly. So I want to slowly add texture to it. And you see this part, these little middle ones, it didn't fill in that well. No problem. We can go and do it that way. Same thing as going. Sorry, I'm jumping from section to section. It's just as I go, I see what needs more paint okay see i forgot to do the sides of these things but we do a little bit of brushing a little bit of brushing and it covers it up and it doesn't take away from what you've already done at least not that much really to be told if you have a dry brush if you have a dry brush okay and you can see as i'm touching it i shouldn't have touched that so soon it's and if you do just swipe it off again it's drying fairly quickly but that's only because we have not put that much paint into it to begin with. And so let's go ahead and fill this in, okay? Let's go now to this side. And if you see that paint starts flicking off of your brush onto your surface, you, I believe that you would have a little too much, too much paint on your brush. You don't want it to be wet. You want it to be a nice dry brushing onto your piece. All right. You can also hit this with a um, with a heat gun, a hair dryer, just really quickly, just for a couple of seconds. Truth be told, like I said, it's it's going to dry quickly because you don't you're not adding so much paint. Now, the inside, I'm going to fill it because, like I said, actually, this might not have even been painted. And originally speaking, when you think about the actual furniture, but you want it to have a good reflective light when it's in the cabinet. Because this is going to go in my hutch. If you saw my jadeite haul, you'll see what um, how I have this displayed. And I just really like, I liked the piece, but I wanted it to have a more of a distressed look and this green, I didn't want this green to take away from the green of my actual jade eye. So we're just adding paint. And like I said, just keep going and try to go in the way of the, of the wood grain. Okay, and then you just have to remember to flip it over because you will miss certain things. on this and just remember like think of like the wear the wear and tear of your old barn furniture or your grandmother's furniture i was raised on a ranch in mexico so you know everything was probably handmade or just had why am i offering just had um a lot of wear a lot of wear a lot of love because it was it was used it, we used it periodically all right Just like whitewashing a pie safe, which by the way, I love pie safes. Okay, a little bit more. Just keep questioning. And like I said, you can add more if you want. You could take away. I'd rather start with a really dry brush. This one I think was a little too wet to start out my, my painting, my layering. You can layer, layer, layer. I mean, you can always take off too but it's much easier to do that. Now, I've touched this part when I shouldn't have. I just brushed it. And if you go this way, 
you get kind of a better coverage. Also, you can stipple. There are certain places, squeeze your brush and you can just stipple to kind of fill it in. And you see you get those little kind of specks. If you don't like that, you can do the more of the swiping. So it just really depends on how you want your look. Like I said, start in the back. I always start in the back. Ah. I always start in the back um, to get a better feel of this. Okay, so this one, I'm going to start with the back over here. Fill it in pretty well because that probably wouldn't get much of a much of a wear. This side would. This side would. Now we're going to go ahead. Sorry this video is so long. I would speed it up, but I just feel like sometimes you get a better idea of the project as well. All right. We're going to do this. And I'm leaving rough edges because on the corners, you know, of old furniture, the corners are the ones that get rubbed out even more. All right. So let's go ahead and finish. So we're almost done. And once I'm done with this, I'm going to take it outside, let it dry in the, I want it to dry outside um, in the desert heat because that way I don't have to worry about my, my Jadeite goodies uh, sticking to it. So we're going to stipple. Sometimes it's easier for me to stipple here. And then I will take some pictures. I have some before. I'll have some after. I want it to look like it was green at one point. Then they painted it and we are using it now. So let me just, let's see. I'm just adding some more paint where I feel that it's a little too, too green. Let's see, because I know it'll be seen. This area right here. I know this just sounds, looks like I'm just going crazy, but you see how I kind of cover it up and get it. So there we go. This is what I wanted to, let's get a little bit more here. Stipple in, stipple in. Okay. This is what I am was hoping to get. Here it is. It's a little distressed. You can see right here. You can see, you can see the wood grain. You can see the texture. It still looks like a piece. And then from a distance, it absolutely looks like it was an old farmhouse piece. So there you go. Let me go ahead and take some pictures and I will show you guys when I'm done. So thank you guys for stopping by and stay tuned for the pictures. Bye everyone.